Coming up on this week's Fever Film Room, seven games remain in the season, and the Fever find themselves on the outside of the playoff picture looking in. As the team heads for Washington, we'll bring in player development coach Tully Bevilacqua to give you an inside look at the Fever. And Bevilacqua tells you how the Fever are planning for the Mystics on Saturday. All that and more is coming up right now. Hello and welcome into another Fever Film Room. Pat Boylan alongside player development coach Tully Bevilacqua. We just got out of practice. Mm -hmm. If you watch practice, things seem pretty light. The team seems to be pretty in focus. How would you evaluate the mood right now? You know, the, the players are, are doing a great job of, um, as you said, staying focused. We've got a job to do, yeah. and that's to go out there and win every game um, that we have to the remainder of the season. So, you know, the old cliche, one game at a time, and... Uh, um, you know, we're going to go into Washington, we're going to go in with positive energy, and we're going to take that game. You look back at the last couple of games, Minnesota, New York, I know that first quarter in New York mm -hmm. was tough, but otherwise it seems like, as a whole, playing some pretty good basketball the last couple of games. Do you feel like maybe there's been a couple of breakthroughs? Uh, definitely, I feel like the defensive intensity has improved a lot. And so, you know, where we used to play in spurts, we're playing in longer periods of, of locked-in defense. So we're just trying to negate those spurts that we used to have where – they would amount to like nine point runs by the opposition. So we're trying to minimize those. Um, but at the same time, lock down our defense and flow into our offense and try and create easy open shots for ourselves so we don't have to kind of get bogged down in that quarter court. I want to talk closing the season out in, in Washington in a moment, but you're closing out your first season here mm -hmm. as the player development coach. Are you happy with how everything's transpired and, and your ability to give a fresh perspective? Well, you always want more. I mean, unfortunately, we have you know a limited amount of time to, to work on individual skills, so we try and maximize the time that we do have before practice with individuals um, and obviously just communicating throughout the course of practice to individuals about certain situations, um, whether it's offense or defense. So, you know, we're, we're always expecting more. We're always expecting the players to get better. I mean, there's always new tricks to learn. You know, even if you're a veteran player, you can always get better. You look at the schedule, the standing, seven games remain. You don't necessarily know how many of those you're going to have to win to make the playoffs, but you know it's probably going to be a majority. Is that a message that the players are getting, or are you trying to keep their focus and the coaches trying to keep their focus more on the near and, and the immediate? Well, I think, uh, you know, when we're together as a group, we're just focusing on the team that we're, we're coming up against. Um, you know, off the floor, you are aware as a player of the situation. We're getting towards the end of the season. You know, okay, we are a couple of games um, out of that eighth position. So, you know, we can't afford to lose too many more. Um, so, you, you know, you treat every game the same. You want to go out and win regardless of what the situation is. So you're still playing for a lot. We're playing for pride. We're playing for a playoff spot. We're playing for the fans. Um, so there's a lot to play for regardless. So. We try and treat every game the same, but we, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you do know as a player what the situation is. When you were a player, how close were your eyes on those standings, and did that affect the way you went into a game mentally? Um, you know, it might fire you up a little bit yeah. if you do see. I know when you're stretching, warming up. If um, depends on what side of the state, what side of the, the you know the coast you're on, um, you can see some results going on. So right. it can either fire you up because it didn't go the way you want, or um, it can fire you up because you got the result you needed. Now you've got to take care of your own business. So, but at the end of the day, it just comes down to ourselves. We've got to win the game and hopefully not have to rely on teams winning and losing. Two of, yeah. two of your next three games are against Washington, and including the next mm -hmm. one. Possibly without Deladon, for those you don't know for sure, what's game planning like when the other team's best player might not be there, but you're not fully sure of, of what her participation is going to be like? Yeah. Well, I think if you go back to the last game played here at Banker's Life against um, Washington, I think Deladon played, all, played the first minutes. two minutes of yeah. the game and went down with injury. And, yeah. uh, you know, Washington kind of dominated us in that game and so I feel like we owe them one mm -hmm. um, and we have to go into a mindset with the assumption she is playing because you never know but um, obviously right now there's the word that, that, that she's not going to be playing but um, you just have to go with that mindset of regardless who out the, who was out there on the floor at the time that you're going to win your matchup you're going to stop your player if you get beat you know that you've got team defense to help you and you've got to have that mindset. 
as a player when you were back in your playing days, obviously now as a coach, for a lot of these players, they were playing overseas before mm -hmm. this, and now we're getting toward the end of another longer season. How's conditioning going, and, and what's that battle like as a player here as you hit this this final stretch of the season? And they haven't been playing, a lot of these players, not mm -hmm. just for four months, they've been playing year-round. Well, that's that's the tricky situation now we find with the WNBA. You, you know, you're starting a preseason with players coming right. off a, you know, a seven-month season, so you have to really be aware of their physical weariness um, mm -hmm. but at the same time you want to obviously start the season off um, on the right foot it's uh, you know and that's where your trainers come come into play and and obviously communication with the players themselves um, and it, the coach you know pokey and the staff here do a great job of of managing every training session depending on how the players are feeling mm -hmm. Then you've got to take into account all the traveling, and right. you know lately in this last two week period there's been a bit of traveling done. So um, you have to take all those into account. Training sessions get changed due to all of those factors. Um, but when you're out there, if it's a minimized practice session, you still have to make the most and maximize what time you've got out there. Well, the Fever will be in action next on Saturday. It's a 7.30 tip out in Washington. You can mm -hmm. catch the game. We'll have the broadcast here. Tamika and I will be on it on WNDY for the game out in Washington. 7.30 tip on my NDY here in Indianapolis. And the Fever are next at home, actually also against the Mystics. It's August 20th. Sunday at 5, you can get tickets for that game and the remaining home games on this schedule by visiting feverbasketball.com or the Bankers Life box office. You're a coach. We've had you as an analyst. You've, you've got your gym and many hats. hats. One comes on, one comes off. But appreciate you putting on the analyst hat and joining us here on the film room. It's always fun working with you, Pat. <laughs>